الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله We praise God Almighty, our Lord, our Creator, our Sustainer we praise Him and we thank Him for the many blessings that He has bestowed upon us. And we declare with clarity of vision that there is no deity worthy of worship except for God Almighty. And we declare also our belief that Muhammad, may the peace and mercy of blessings, may the first peace, mercy, and blessings, blessings of God be upon him, is a messenger and a prophet sent by God as a mercy to all of humanity. My dear brothers and sisters, one of the things that was sent with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his mercy was the revelation of the Qur'an, the scripture of the Qur'an. And as believers, it is our hope and our aspiration that throughout this time that we have on earth, that we take heed from the message that is contained in the Qur'an that we let the guidance and the light that is in the Qur'an penetrate our hearts and that we can improve in our character and in our, this, the foundation of our faith so that we may stand before God on the, on the Day of Judgment and that that standing before God will be a felicitous one. Over the last several times I have given khutbah, I have highlighted a, a few terms that are emphasized in the Qur'an as characteristics of those who will be successful, who will be uh, in a good state on that day of judgment. We've talked about al-muflih, the one who is successful. We've talked about al-muhsin, the one who does good deeds. Today, I would like to highlight another term, another uh, uh, concept that's highlighted over and over in the Qur'an, and this is the the term yaqeen. Yaqeen, my dear brothers and sisters, is a term that means absolute certainty of faith. And some suggest, some scholars suggest that it's the highest level of faith, to have ayn al-yaqeen, to have the, the, the certainty in the belief of, of, in God and in al-ghayb, in the unseen. Included in that is, our day of, is the day of judgment. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an وَمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَ النَّفْسَ عَنَ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى And as for the one who is fearful of the standing before their Lord on that day, on the day of judgment, and therefore restrains him or herself from indulging in his or her desires or whims that are in transgression of God's law, their place on that day of judgment will be al-jannah, will be the garden of bliss. True faith, solid certainty in the belief not only in God, but in that day of judgment and in the revelation sent to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as well as the prophets that were sent before him. This is a quality that we all hope and we aspire to achieve within our own level of faith. We want to attain the level of yaqeen. How is it that we can come about achieving that level? Because if we are able to attain the level of certainty in our faith, then much good can come from that certainty, both in this world and of course in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran over and over that He has given us signs, signs of His existence. Look at the, the heavens and the earth, how he creates from, from a dry, barren desert with a little bit of life, many, uh, many things that come to life. From the dead comes life. How he has made the day and the night uh, follow certain patterns where they, uh, the day becomes longer and then shorter, etc. And we look to the heavens and the, and the, the vastness of the universe. And we're humbled. We, under, we begin to appreciate the vastness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created a universe, our 
brightest minds as human beings are unable to comprehend. We're in, unable to wrap our minds around where even the universe ends. What does that mean, the end of the universe, and what's beyond that? When we put things in perspective and when we reflect upon the, the creation of God, then we are truly humbled and reminded of our own insignificance. The challenge that we face as human beings is that we have a degree of intelligence that uh, most would argue is superior to other creatures. That our ability to not only understand things but to control our environment and our circumstances and the conditions of life around us to the point where we feel so superior that we begin to forget about our Lord and our Creator. We begin to focus on ourselves as the center of the universe. For many centuries before, human beings thought that Earth was the center of the universe as an indication of our own sort of self-centeredness, where we are the most important thing in the, in the universe. But then as we grew in our, in our understanding of creation, we realized that the Earth circum, uh, uh, circles the Sun and that the Sun is just one small star in a vast galaxy, and the galaxy is one small dot in a, in a greater creation that we, it, it, we can't even uh, comprehend. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ He has not given, given us as human beings anything of his knowledge except for the little, the little bit that he permits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Qur'an over and over and over tells us about his signs, his ayat. And he challenges us to not only look at the miraculous creation and the signs of the physical universe and the physical life that he has created, but also look at the, at the trajectory of human history. Because there are signs in the rise and fall of nations. There are signs of the rise and fall of the individual, of one's character and within, within one's lifespan that we see signs of God Almighty. So one of the ways that we can attain a degree of certainty about the existence of God and even the hereafter is to look at the signs that God has placed before us. If God would have so well, he could have imposed belief upon us like the angels, but he has given us this freedom to think about and to reflect upon his creation so that we can, through our own efforts, strive to comprehend, to understand truth and reality, and that we may choose through our free will to pursue what is good and avoid what is wrong. So let us use our intellects as the first step to attaining al yaqeen or certainty of faith in God and in the unseen. The second step, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, is through patience and prayer. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Seek assistance, seek help in this attempt, in this effort to have certainty of faith, to have yaqeen. Seek support in this effort through prayer and through perseverance, uh, perseverance and patience. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Through patient perseverance and through prayer. Prayer, my dear brothers and sisters, softens our hearts. It is a reminder for us, and that's why we pray throughout the day. It's a reminder for us that uh, we ultimately are dependent upon God Almighty for all that we have. For if we didn't pray as often, it would be easy for us to neglect our position vis-a-vis -vis God. We get caught up in business and making money and, and uh, trying to succeed in, in business and in whatever endeavors we have going on in our life. But Allah reminds us through the commandment for us to pray regularly throughout the day to pause, to stop. There's something, whatever you're doing, there's something more important. Stand before Allah. Stand as if you see God as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was taught by the angel Gabriel when he told him, what is Ihsan? What is the best uh, conduct? He said, it is to worship God as if you see God. 
And even though you, you, you see God not, know that God is seeing you. So let us stand in prayer with the knowledge that God is perceiving us, that God is looking at us at that moment. And it's a reminder because when we are neglectful of our prayers, we're neglectful of our, uh, of our position vis-a-vis -vis God, of our relationship to God. And our relationship to God is one of obedience. It's one of humility. It's one of subservience, for we are ibadullah. We are the servants of God. And through standing regularly in prayer with the correct state of mind reminds us, as forgetful as we are as human beings, our true place in this creation. That ultimately we're here for a short period of time and that ultimately we will stand before God. Because listen to the rest of this ayah. It says, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Doing that, seeking help through patience and prayer, is a challenge. It's difficult. La kabiratun. Except for those who have humility before God, who are, who are God-fearing, who have khushu'a, who are the khashi'een. الَّذِينَ يَظَنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ That they are, who, who have certainty of faith, now this is a different term. The word is not yaqeen here, it's vun. Now vun means who, who, or who believe, who have the opinion that. And it's clearly a lesser standard even than yaqeen. But it says that, that seeking help through patience and prayer is difficult except on those who have piety, who have fear of God. Those, and then def defining those who have piety, it says those who have certainty, or degree of certainty, who yavannuna, that they will be standing before their Lord and that, that they are in the process of returning to God. So again, the way in which we can increase in our faith is to engage in prayer, to engage in worship and be sincere in our prayer with the right state of mind in which we visualize ourselves standing before God, that we recall at that moment that ultimately no matter how caught up we are in the difficulties of life, in the struggles of life, in the temptations and the challenges of life, that ultimately it will come to an end and with certainty we will stand before God and that whatever choices we make now we must feel proud of on that day. So we must be conscient, conscious of God and conscientious of our behavior so that, we, uh, plan, that we're planning ahead for that certain meeting that we all have with God Almighty. And the third thing that we can do in attaining a level of certainty after looking at the signs of God and after seeking help through patience and prayer is to reflect upon our own soul, is to look inwardly. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, tells us that we have inside us, in our, in our fitrah, in our very nature, a knowledge and a belief in one God. So, even without the external signs of God, we have the ability to perceive that God exists with certainty by looking inside of our own soul and our own nature as human beings. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have taught his companions, مَنْ عَرَفَ نَفْسَهُ عَرَفَ رَبَّهُ Whoever knows their own self, knows their Lord. This is an opportunity that we have here when we gather for Jum'ah prayer to reflect upon our week that has passed. To look deep in our hearts and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and for guidance and to give us the strength of endurance to do what is right and to avoid what is wrong. For Allah knows each of our shortcomings and He knows how in need we are of His mercy but He has given us good news, and the good news is that He is merciful. So let us not, uh, let us not avoid facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us face Allah full of our shortcomings and our misdeeds. Let us admit to them and acknowledge them before God Almighty, and let us prepare for that day of certainty, the day of judgment, uh, the day in which we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as individuals to be held to account for the choices that we've made in this world. Let us ask Allah 
for all of these things. Allah yastajib lakum. My dear brothers and sisters, al yaqeen certainty of faith. We want to adorn ourselves with this attribute because with certainty of faith comes many blessings. Many blessings not just for the hereafter but for this world as well. The first and foremost is peace of heart and peace of mind. For when you have certainty in the belief not just in God but that God is merciful, that God is loving, that God is compassionate, that God is the provider for you, and this last point is an important one because sometimes we're caught up in, yes, I know it's not right for me to engage in this or that business practice, but I need to provide for my family. Allah is the provider. And if when we have certainty in God's attribute, in the existence of God and His attributes, then it will inform our conduct and we will not find ourselves resorting to this or to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, بعد بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد نعلم أنك يضيق صدرك بما يقولون and God says we know we know that what they say about you the falsehoods uh, about you this is talking to the Prophet Muhammad but it also re uh, reflects upon all of us all of the falsehoods that are said about you and the faith of Islam and how it makes your chest constricted, how it makes you, how it bothers you so much. What they say about you, how it bothers you. God knows that. فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And he tells us in response as a command, praise your Lord and be amongst those who prostrate in prayer. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord until true certainty of faith comes to you. Hatta yatiak al yaqeen. Until that yaqeen, that certainty of faith comes to you. Worship your Lord. Praise God. Be amongst those who prostrate and worship your Lord until that true faith and true certainty of God's existence and the day of judgment comes to you. With that true certainty we see other blessings. Given that we live in a time in which there's a lot of misinformation about our faith, if we do not have certainty of our own faith, then we are shaken in our conviction. And when we have weak faith and someone challenges it, we respond in a way that is not becoming of a true believer. We might respond to ugliness with ugliness, but as we are reminded in the Quran, to repel evil with what is better, to repel ugliness with what is beautiful. This is the response of someone who has certainty of faith, someone who knows without question, without wavering, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful and all knowing, and that what ultimately matters isn't what is done to you or said about you, but what ultimately matters is how you respond to that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us clearly to respond with what is beautiful. Let me share with you a story. Last Friday, one of the members of this Islamic center, one of the young people who grew up here in this, in this community, spoke to thousands of people at the graduation ceremony at the University of Southern California as the valedictorian. This young woman, Sarah Shahawi, is a jewel in our community. And when she was interviewed for the, uh, the article written in the paper about how it is that she became the valedictorian, what it is that inspired her, she said, my faith in Islam inspired me to excellence. There's an article on our website and there's a video, you can watch it, you can read and watch the video, but it's inspirational. I attended her speech that she gave a week ago, Thursday night, to the heads of the university, the provost, the chancellor, the president, everyone was there. The faculty and the, many of the graduating class was there at the baccalaureate celebration. 
and she spoke following the Archbishop of the Catholic Church. And her, her speech was so eloquent, it made him look like an amateur, and he's a very good speaker. She spoke with conviction, and what she's told everyone was that my faith in God drove me to excellence, but out of a place of love and tolerance and compassion. She's going next year to Harvard Medical School, and she said, I, have, I was raised in a family that taught, that promoted the values of Islam. And this drove my interest in becoming a medical doctor because I believe that as Muslims we have something to offer the world to heal society. But when she was on campus, she was valedictorian not only because she had a perfect grade point average, there was one other student that had a perfect grade point average, but what put her over the top was her community service that she had done on campus. She was the leader, the founder and the leader of the Ansar Service Project, which was an interfaith student group started by the Muslim community there under her leadership to engage with other community, other communities of faith in serving the, the homeless population, in servi serving the needy, and in giving back. And what she said in her talk was inspiring to all of those who heard. She said, I dare to hope. I dare to hope that through faith we can make the world a better place and that my solid belief in Islam allowed me to engage with people, peoples of other faiths and gave me the self-confidence to engage with them and to find where it is that we differ but then to also find the common ground so that we may work together for the common good. Everyone who was listening was in awe of her eloquence and inspired by her spirit and gave her a standing ovation upon the completion of her speech. And then the next day she gave this, the speech at the valedictorian uh, commencement ceremony for, uh, as the valed, valedictorian for USC. My dear brothers and sisters, Sarah Shahari is a shining example, but she's not the point of my talk. She is a, a, a symbol of what one can achieve when inspired by true certainty in faith. Let us focus on this message. Let us reflect upon the level of our Iman, of our faith. Let us attain a level of certainty through patience and prayer, through using our intellects and reflecting upon the nature of God's creation, and through reflecting upon our own souls. My dear brothers and sisters, I'll conclude with this idea and this thought. One of the manifestations of true faith is that we trust in our God Almighty. That we have faith in God Almighty that He will provide for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when we submit to God, when we trust in God, that God will guide our footsteps and make us successful in this world and in the hereafter. One of the things that the Islamic Center of Southern California is now venturing to embark upon is, a new, is hiring a person in a new position to be volunteer coordinator. And a number of weeks ago, I spoke to you about volunteerism, about coming together and being a contributor to this community and not just a consumer of the, pro of the programs here. Everyone who enters the masjid should be a contributor with your talents, with your resources, and yes, with your money. In order for us to bring on this, this person, we need financial support from each of you. And as a community, uh, as, as someone who gives the khutbah often, I'm, uh, I'm happy to say that we don't come up here and ask you to give money often. But when we ask you, we hope that uh, you understand the significance and the importance of the projects that we're embarking upon. This person will be a youth group coordinator and a volunteer coordinator, a full-time position, God willing, if we're able to raise the funds. And this young person who graduated as valedictorian is someone who came through the youth group of the Islamic Center and was influenced and impacted by the programs that we offer. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm asking you today to donate generously to the Islamic Center so that we may, as a community, produce the next generation so that they have 
a level of certainty in their faith that they attain yaqeen and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in our level of faith so that we may have certainty in our faith and may trust in God's mercy and His provision. Ya Allah, we ask you, for you are our Lord and our Creator, to bestow upon us your mercy and your blessings. Amen. O Allah, we, we, we are before you calling you as fallible in individuals, for you are the only perfect being in all of, in all of the universe. O Allah, forgive us our shortcomings. Amen. Protect us from going astray. O Allah, support us with one another. O Allah, instill in our hearts certainty of faith. ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. O oh Allah, bestow your mercy and blessings upon all of the prophets that you have sent, including the final prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. أقل الصلاة إن صلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر.